Hello, I'm uh, Saber Chaudhary. I'm a member of parliament from Bangladesh. I'm also the current president of the Inter-Parliamentary Union, which is the global organization of national parliaments based in Geneva. I think the involvement in my case, looking back, and it's been a while now, uh, since I've been, uh, I was first a member of parliament in 1996. Obviously, climate change didn't have the profile at that time that it started to get subsequently. Uh, so the first involvement was at the national level, because of course this is one of the defining challenges that a country like Bangladesh faces. And then I attended uh, the COP meeting in Denmark, uh, in Copenhagen, uh, COP15. And that's when I was really exposed to the international discourse and the negotiations. So since then, the involvement has deepened. And I've also tried to take it to the Inter-Parliamentary Union, uh, which now has a very high profile as far as this particular agenda is concerned. You see, to be very honest with you, MPs usually have a lot on their, on their plate. Uh, there are so many agendas. There are domestic issues. There are issues of the constituency they need to be involved in. But I believe that in addition to the constituency that we physically represent, there is also a constituency of issues uh, which are of importance nationally as well as globally where we should be involved. And uh, if you look at climate change, so whether it is uh, food security, whether it is desertification, whether it is rising sea levels, salinity intrusion, uh, changes in pattern of rainfall, uh, these are all captured by climate change. So this uh, subject is a strategic entry point for a lot of other issues which are very fundamental and critical to development. So I think if an MP wants to have like a quick path to the whole development challenges uh, that are in front of him, this is the perfect place. And of course, if we look at uh, Bangladesh itself, the magnitude of the impacts of climate change is huge. Just a one meter rise in sea level will lead to a displacement of 30 million people who are the poorest of the poor, and that is based on the population today. IPU is the global organization of uh, world parliament, so the membership is institutional. Uh, it's not an individual MP who becomes a member of the IPU. The national parliament is a member of the IPU. And currently our membership count stands at 171 national parliaments, uh, comprising of about 46,000 MPs who represent 6.5 billion people. So in terms of outreach, uh, this is as good an organization as you're likely to get. And I think if you look at the functions of a member of parliament, whether it is in terms of uh, legislation, in terms of appropriation of resources through the budgetary process, policy coherence, oversight of government activities, um, the role of parliamentarians is absolutely critical uh, to the implementation of the Paris Accord, uh, the Paris Agreement rather. And also, of course, the whole issue of national ownership. Um, unless uh, national parliaments and the country as a whole embraces the Paris Agreement, this is never going to be implemented. And MPs, by virtue of the fact that they represent the people, are perfectly positioned to play this very important role. Well, let me uh, share with you what we discussed at our parliamentary meeting. Um, we talked about legislation uh, that is actually going to look at the NDCs, whether that can be brought into law. I think that's very important. The question of raising ambition levels, I think, is absolutely critical. I know there's a lot of euphoria surrounding the Paris Agreement, but if you look at what it is going to produce as of this moment, based on best pledges, it's uh, about a rise of 3.4 degrees Celsius and we are aspiring for 1.5, that's a huge ambition gap in addition to an emissions gap. So I think that's really where the focus has to be, that's where the action has to be.